Hey guys, and warm welcome back to the channel. My name is Grace, if you're new here, and this is The Rusty Thicket. I am a watercolor artist that is trying to build up my small business, especially before we get back to the States. Currently, I am living in Okinawa, Japan with my husband, who is in the United States Air Force. Uh, we are loving it here, but we're really excited to get back to the States and uh, have a few more things accessible to me, because right now I don't sell online or anything. Uh, but I just wanted to clue in a few of the newest subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I'm so happy that you're here. We are almost to 500 and uh, that's terribly exciting, not just for the milestone, but because I have a very large giveaway that's happening at 500 subscribers. And uh, that's gonna, it started out as a bag of stuff and now it's like a whole box. So um, I got a little carried away, but I'm excited. So make sure you guys are liking all the videos and commenting, that helps me so much and uh, share, share, share so we can get some more subscribers. I'm loving the little community that we're building here. Um, and if you can hear them, there are the jets. So anyway, uh, today I really wanted to go over my supplies, my materials that I use on a regular basis. Um, I think I've probably talked about them in the past, just on, you know, mentioning things in uh, videos and stuff, but I haven't really actually gone through them and explained why I have them. Um, if you're new to the channel especially, I love miniatures, I love small, compact things, uh, trinkets and stuff like that, of course, but it also translates into my art. I like to work small, I like to have small items that travel very easily because I love painting outside when I can. It is finally starting to cool down here, so we're getting around to the time frame that I can start going to the park and stuff comfortably and uh, doing that sort of thing. So today I just wanted to share with you all my my travel setup, the thing that I like to take with me when I know that I'm painting outside of the house. This is also going with me when we go back home into Tennessee in a couple of months for Christmas. Um, if all goes well, we're waiting on passports still. Um, but this is it. This is the whole kit. This little bag right here, that's everything. So uh, I'm going to change some camera angles and we're going to go through everything that I like to use on a daily basis. And uh, yeah, so let's go. All right, so here is the bag and the entire setup, which is completely contained within here. That's one of my favorite things about this bag specifically is that I can fit absolutely everything that I want to travel with in this one bag and it's nice and thin. You can definitely put it in a backpack and it takes up very little room. I do like that there's a flat back and then this front part is curved. It makes it really, really roomy in here. Um, and then I also like this bag so much that I actually have it for my planner as well. Uh, the only thing that is different between these two is that this one has a handle and it also carries um, headphones if you have like the kind that, you know, have straps and you need to put them through something, which is pretty cool. Um, I do wish that this one had the handle. I just didn't know at the time when I bought when when I went to go buy that second one that this one had a handle. I just I didn't really pay much attention to that until after I got it home and I was comparing them. Uh, this brand is called Utlim or Utlim something like that. U T L I M. I will make sure to link that in the description box below. You can get them on Amazon for about thirty or forty dollars, depending on what style. There are a couple of different ones, um, not just in color, but you can get like the half size one. I would probably find a pretty good use for those, so I may end up having one before we leave from Japan, since I can buy them here. I've never seen this in another store or anything like I don't believe I remember seeing them in Hobby Lobby or Michaels or any other kind of stationary place in the States but I do know you can get them online um, so yeah this is it uh, the coolest part about this besides the fact that it's self-containing as far as all that goes is that once you open it up and you fold it down you can hear that it is magnetic so that it will stand on its own and of course you could lay it down and take things out like this, but my favorite part is that, you know, it stands up and out of the way. And I really think that's gonna be great for when I'm on the airplane on that little fold out tray. It does weigh quite a bit with everything in here, so I'm not super worried about it being uh, something that might topple over, though I would probably in some like extreme wind or whatever, lay it down flat. 
but this is everything that I need on a regular basis. All of the essentials that I want to make sure I leave the house with when I am going to the different locations, parks and things like that. I have never taken it, taken it on the airplane before, so I'm really excited to see how that goes. Uh, but I just wanted to walk you guys through everything that I take with me. Uh, we'll start with this little zipper pouch down here first. Um, I have a collapsible water cup. Now my paint brushes actually carry water since they are travel paint brushes, but we'll get more into those here in just a minute anyway. Um, but I like that this is pretty big considering its size. I like that it folds down just like you saw before. I like that it has a lid that sometimes I use as a palette on its own. This is not the kind of lid that keeps the water in here and like, you know, from spilling if you've got it out, but it will, you know, keep it from splashing and stuff. And I think that will be really handy for the airplane as well. I use it all the time when I'm out in the field. I'll put that there. Um, I always take washi tape because I like to be able to line some of my artwork. When it's in a sketchbook, it's not nearly as important, but when I work with just plain pieces, obviously I wanna tape them down to something usually. I always have some kind of little spongy thing. I like to take this for textures or lifting water or uh, paint up off of the paper that maybe I made a mistake on. I absolutely always bring a white pearl eraser. This is my favorite eraser. I've been using them since high school. They are affordable, especially in large packs. They are clean. They do not leave any kind of residue or build up on your paper when you go to erase them. I literally have been using them for years. This is an older one that I've got just for comparison. Um, my favorite eraser. I also have an eraser pencil or pen that I'll get to in just a minute. And we will come back to those as well. So this is a wax crayon. I take it for avoiding areas that I don't want the watercolor to uh, be on. This is really only something I do in my sketchbook just for kind of fun and technique and things like that. I actually have a masking fluid pen that I will get to in a second also that I prefer to use on actual pieces or you know larger amounts of areas in the uh, sketchbook. I bring um, an extra 0.5 ink, or 0.5 lead for my pencil. Um, and then I always bring some kind of palette, obviously, we'll get to that in a second. But then I also were gift, I was also gifted these um, last year, year before. One of my uh, followers sent me a huge box of just beautiful, beautiful witchy stuff and she included these uh, paint pa papers also. And uh, they are called, Peerless watercolors. She sent me a list of what all of the colors are, which I'm super appreciative of. And I like to put them in this little tin so that they can be all together, but also um, I sometimes use it to mix them in the top palette piece up here. I am mostly bringing these because I just don't get the opportunity to use them as much as I would like. So I want them to come with me when we go to Tennessee. All right, so uh, one of the most interesting things I think I have in here is uh, this little guy. It is a, like a sports band, a sweat band, and it's white and it's that towel material. I use this like it is a paper towel and that is how I clean off my brushes when I'm traveling. So I don't have to have loose paper towels or if I'm at the park, the wind isn't blowing them away. It's easily accessible. It's small, it's incredibly absorbent because it's really for sweat. Um, I have them, I think they are they came in a two pack. I got them off of Amazon. I will also link those below. This is honestly essential. Um, I like paper towels because, you know, rags and things are typically not as absorbent as paper towel, but these really are. And they're stretchy and, you know, once you put them on your wrist, they're not gonna go anywhere. Um, absolutely essential. If you've never used one of these before, I would love to know if you guys purchase one and see what you think. Like, make sure you leave a comment in below. All right, so uh, the next thing is the sketchbook. So this is specifically my favorite small sketchbook, but there are so many that you could pick from. This is the Arteza 80 Pages Watercolor Book Premium 
5.5 by 3.5. It is 110 pound cold press paper. And my favorite part about it is that it is double sided. So not only do I not have to worry about whether or not I'm gonna bleed through because it's a nice heavy weight, but my texture is the same on both sides and I'm not losing any quality in those paintings. Um, I have several of these. I believe they come in three packs. You can also get them on Amazon and I will link that below. Um, I like that they are two-sided for two different reasons. One, obviously, is that you can work on either side of the paper, but then also you have that opportunity to do large panoramic pieces. Um, I cannot wait to take one of these home and do a live painting of some of the Blue Ridge Mountains when we get there because I miss them terribly. Um, now, this one is one I've been working on for some time. I'm going to do a sketchbook tour at some point, so I'm not going to show any art in here right now. But I do want to show you that there's this really neat pocket at the back end. This is what I use to put in scrap paper so that I can do my swatch testing. Um, I have not began painting into this one just yet. This is purely sketches. Um, and I will be inking these and painting um, soonish. And that'll be another video on the channel at a later time. All right, so let's put that up there. Let's move on this so we can still see it. Okay, and then uh, probably the most important piece of any watercolor travel kit is the watercolor itself. Uh, this is the first palette I ever purchased. I was really intimidated and not really sure what to purchase initially when it comes to like the tubes of watercolor because, um, you know, you have to buy each individual color and the internet was saying, you needed 30, you needed five, you needed, you know, so I just decided to go ahead and do a single palette. I went with this one because it was travel sized and because it was the smallest one available at the time when I went looking, um, but was also not just, you know, the cheap little palettes that you use when you're in grade school. Um, it's by Koi Watercolors. Uh, Sakura is the brand. I also, before even moving to Japan, realized that my favorite pens are also by the same brand. Um, so one of my favorite things about this, besides the fact that the watercolors, which I didn't know initially, are absolutely beautiful. They're vibrant, they're transparent, and I, I love the way that they layer together. The colors are incredible. And one day I would love to have the nice big, I think it's like 48 palettes or something like that. Or no, it's bigger than that, 72, I think. Anyway, so the cool thing about this palette is that it layers really easily for travel so that you can do things one-handed. You can put your painting up here, tape it down, and paint up here while you're holding it. Um, it obviously comes with a travel brush. And the cool thing about this one is that you can pre-fill it with water. And then it has a stopper on this end that you go ahead and plug the water up and then you can store it and add the brush tip later on arrival so that it's nice and compact. Um, obviously the palette is uh, on pegs so that you can put it wherever you would like. You can put it on this side also and down here even. So that's really cool. And then um, obviously I use this as a palette as well when I'm not putting paintings up there. Um, but then it's also got the sponge, which works very similar to this, but it's very small. And as you can tell, I have not cleaned it in some time. But a sponge is another great um, idea for non-paper towels. Um, but I just I really like the texture of this, especially when I go to like blotch things off. And you can wash it in a regular washing machine. So there's that. All right, and then the next thing are my pens. So along with that same brand of Sakura, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with uh, Microns. I take a 0 0.1 and a 0 0.05 with me everywhere that I go. This is ultra fine for details, and this is what I do most of my actual outlining in. I'm not really sure why the two colors are so different. They're literally the same pen. I just bought them in two different places. Um, so yeah, I don't know about that. All right, and then I take a pencil. I usually just take a really simple pencil with me. It doesn't need to be fancy. One of my favorite pens and pencil combinations is this, um, 
I think it's a jet stream. Yeah, a jet stream four in one. It's got four uh, color inks and then the mechanical pencil as well, but I usually don't take that with me in this travel kit and I'll have one with me on my trip, but you know, if I'm just going out to the field, I don't really need that. So this is a really simple mechanical pencil. And then I have the jelly, the Sakura jelly roll pens. I love these. They come in hundreds of different colors. So do these actually, maybe not hundreds, but lots and lots of different colors, like 30, 40 different colors. Um, they also come in sparkly, I've never tried the black before, which is why I added it this time because I'm curious as to what to do with that. But I use these for embellishing. I like to add little highlights at the end or just, you know, little flecks of gold at the end. Um, in watercolor, a lot of the white that you will see is the white of the paper because that's a, as white as you can really get. You don't layer on top with white and watercolor, at least in my style, I don't. So adding the jelly roll at the end for little highlights and cute little squiggles and things to just kind of add texture is it's literally just embellishing and I just really like the look. So that's why I have those. Here is another example of a paintbrush that contains water for traveling. This one is all together though. You put the water in, you screw the lid on, and then it's got a cap. And I do like this one specifically because it's more like a pen, so I can, you know, attach it to certain things and the, the tip is actually a lot finer than the one that's in here. All right, so um, I do have a secondary eraser. I like this one again because it's got the pen cap so I can stick it on things, but it's also replaceable. And um, sometimes it's nice to just have something that you can be a little bit more fine motor with on the more detailed erasing parts. That's not something I use all the time though. And then this is a masking liner pen. Um, again, I usually don't use this kind of stuff in my everyday practice, but when I'm traveling or when I'm out on some kind of, you know, park thing, I like to just play around with stuff. And um, these are the two things I enjoy using the most. Um, sometimes different patterns and things come up and I think it's just a lot of fun. I also use it to mask off the little round spots in my mushrooms because that can be kind of a pain um, when you're working really, really tiny to, uh, you know, avoid those places. I also use the jelly roll to go back in and clean those up as well. Uh, but this is it, you guys. This is everything that I take with me when I'm going to the park and all of this is neatly contained in this cute little bag. Um, as you can see here, it's got quite a bit of room. You can fold it flat, pack it in a backpack. It's great, it's magnetic on the back end there. And everything fits in there, perfect. So I'd love to know in the comment section below what you think about my setup. Definitely let me know if I'm missing something that you think is essential, because these are, as far as I'm aware, <laughs> my essentials. Um, I would just love to know what you guys think and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and on our next video, I'm hoping we'll be painting in the park with all of these things because the temperatures are finally getting nice. So again, I will see you guys next week and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye guys.